what's up guys it's covert code here and welcome back to episode 14 of our zero to hero series in the last video we covered how you can use dictionaries in your scripts and in today's video we're going to be talking about events now again events are pretty useful they're they're on par sort of with tables in my opinion um because events actually trigger things when something happens so let's say uh someone touched a door and you want to kill them if they touch that door or more realistically if someone touches a lava part and you want them to die if they touch it events is how you make that happen so let me just uh open this script back up from last time and delete everything and let's actually work with the example i just gave okay so let's say we want to have a part okay so let me just um create a part here and let's just say i want whoever touches this to die so i'll make it red like classic red anchored and just resize this to the, around that size so right now if i play and attempt to touch the part i will not die obviously it's brand new there's no scripts associated with the part so nothing will happen okay but by using events, we can actually make this part work. Um, let's call this lava just because, uh, you know, the name fits. So let's go to the script, okay? And let's store the lava part inside of a variable. So lava part, okay, is equal to workspace.lava, okay? Pretty self-explanatory. If you haven't watched the video on variables yet, I would suggest watching that first. So all we did is we just stored that lava part inside of the lava part variable. Now the way we'd actually go about um, declaring an event is by saying lava part dot okay and don't type anything just type a dot and this should come up okay. This is a list of sort of attributes relating to the part so if you scroll down these are just properties. Um, and you can actually tell by this icon that there are property, okay? And just scroll down, all the way down, and these are the events, okay? So anything with this sort of lighting icon is an event. Okay? Anything with this icon, remember, it's important, okay? This icon means event. And if you don't know what those events do, just go to view and click on the object browser right here and let's scroll down and find part on this list so let me just try and find part uh part right here okay so i click part and this is just going to tell me every single property and function relating to the part okay so this is a property this is a function let me just scroll down so essentially this is a a property of every single part these are all the functions relating to that part and these are all of the events down here okay and if you don't know what this one does for example you just click on that and it'll give you a summary of what the event does and when it actually you know triggers itself so this is pretty handy especially if you're new okay so again keep this in mind view objects browser and in our case if you want to make the part uh you know kill someone if they touch it uh we're going for the touched event so let me show you guys how to actually use this okay so back to the script lava part dot touch so you enter the name of the event okay then use this colon here and connect okay just like that that is how to declare an event and all you're doing here is you're saying that whenever this event fires you want to run this function let me show you guys okay so an event always triggers a function. You can't really do something like, uh, you know, you can't actually write direct code here, like print high or something like that. This will not work. Um, it always triggers a function. Okay. So what this is doing is whenever the part, uh, parts touched event actually runs. Okay. So it gets triggered. Uh, you're going to run this function. And what the connect does is it's sort of attaching the function to this event. Okay, so it's pairing them up. So whenever it's touched, this function will run. That's why the connect is there. So let me just print being touched. Okay, and let's play. And if you go to the output, let me just clear this up. And whenever I touch this, it's going to print out that it's being touched just like that. Okay, so let me just close that 
and you can literally do the same thing with any other event okay just like this it's the same structure and the fun thing with events is they actually pass arguments okay so remember in the functions tutorial i made uh, earlier in the series we covered parameters and arguments so this essentially does the same thing because it's a function okay so if you just go to the object browser and click on the event that you're trying to learn about this is going to say that it's an event okay just like this is going to say uh you know data type of the property so size is a vector three uh we already covered that but let's just stick to events so this is an event okay and this is the name of the event and this is the argument that it returns okay so this is the data type of the argument and this is the actual argument okay so an instance is essentially any object in your game so a part is an instance okay a a gui is an instance a anything in your game pretty much is an instance and this is just saying that it's going to return another part of type instance so if we go back to our script we haven't entered any arguments okay we can obviously just leave it like this but if we want to know that uh someone actually touched this we need to know who touched it okay so uh we are going to add it okay this you can name this anything remember arguments can be any sort of name you guys want i'm just going to say hit that's usually what i do in my games uh lowercase hit just like this so it is actually the other part okay and it's of type instance so whenever something touches the lava part it's going to trigger this function and it's going to tell us what part actually hit our um our other part so if i print out hit okay and play it's actually going to tell us which part touched the lava part okay so if i touch this with my foot it's going to say that i'm touching this with my right foot i also touch this with my right lower leg um so yeah it's just going to tell you which part actually touched the lava part and obviously the same goes for any other type of event they have arguments some have more than one um like this so when they have more than one they're separated by a comma okay so just keep that in mind now that you actually know how events work and you know how if conditions work let's actually make this lava part work so this is the hit and it in our little playtest we saw that we usually hit this with our left foot or right foot or some part of our leg and if we actually play again these are all parts within your character okay so let's just open up workspace and find our character object right here and as you guys can see this is the list of all the parts in your character okay so we usually hit this uh part here with our um left foot so it's this part and we usually hit it let's just see with our right foot like that also our right lower leg you know etc and these are all children of the character okay so Keep that in mind. All of these parts are situated inside of the character object. So let me just stop and let's make this work. So we know what touched the, the part at this point, but we actually need to get the character, okay? So one way of doing this is checking if the parent of the part that we hit is a character, okay? So local character is uh, hit.parent, like that. And this is essentially telling us the parent of the hit, whatever it may be, okay? So if character is, um, let's say, is a model, okay? And this is just another function, which is a part of the model um, sort of class, you could say. So if you, don't, if you don't know what this is, just go to object browser, find model, okay? So this and scroll up until you find is a okay so this is just going to tell you if it is a type like it's, if it's a specific object type so if you say is a model then it's checking if it's an actual model okay in this case the class name for this part is not a model so this will return false and this if condition will never actually run and the same goes for any other type of instance okay you could say if hit is a model you know uh Make sure to actually type that right this will return false because it's an actual part okay as you guys saw 
So now we're practically confirming if this is a model, okay? If it is a model, then we want to destroy it. So there's two ways to do this, okay? The easiest way is just doing character break joints. Again, you've never seen this before. However, if you've never seen something like this, just go to the object browser and this is a child of model, okay? So remember, the character here is model, is a model. So if you don't know what that is, just go to model right here and find break joints. So let's scroll up and this is break joints, first one. And it's just going to say it's going to break all the surface joints contained within. And that's just a fancy term for breaking your character apart, essentially. And if you click play, and attempt to touch the part now, um, it's going to check if, for example, if we touch this with our um, with our left foot, it's going to check if the parent is a model. And let's just check that ourselves. Um, left foot is this part right here. And if the parent itself is a model, which it is, okay, it's going to break the joints of the model. And if I touch this, I die. Okay, so that's pretty much how to make a working lava part. Let me just stop. And that's just one use case of events, okay? There are so many use cases, I can't really cover them all. However, as I said, objects browser, just go and, you know, mess around with all the different properties, functions, and events, and you will get way better at scripting. So yeah, guys, that's all I have for this video. I would appreciate if you just leave a like and, you know, subscribe if you can. And also, I look at your comments every single day. Don't hesitate to just suggest video ideas. So yeah, guys, I'll see you guys next time.